objective geology multiple choice questions with answers this is the solid question paper of uh, upsc combined geo scientist exam 2021 and i hope uh, this solid paper is useful for various competitive exams like uh, csr net gate gsi and other exams welcome to set 4 coming to the first question when cooling of mineralizing liquid is slow leucite inverts to calcite potash feldspar intergrowth the intergrowth is termed as choices are a perthite b polyleucite c pseudo leucite and d antiperthite the correct option is pseudo leucite c do pseudo leucite is the correct option the name pseudo leucite it refers to an intergrowth of nepheline and potash feldspar within leucite crystals and bowen and uh, elstad uh, in 1937 they explained the genesis of pseudo leucite with reference to the system nepheline calcite sio2 so pseudo leucite is the pseudo leucite is the correct answer next question in layered intrusions variation in mineral composition is normally not evident until analysis has been done such layering is called a model layering b comb layering c cryptic layering d ristic layering so the correct option is c cryptic layering uh, cryptic layering is nothing but systematic variation in the chemical composition of certain minerals with stratigraphic height in a layered sequence so c cryptic layering is the correct option next question desilication reaction occurs when a Carbonate sedimentary rock reacts with silicate magma and produces calcium magnesium silicates. B. Primary alkaline magma generated from primitive subalkaline basaltic magma. C. Low pressure crystal fractionation from subalkaline basaltic magma. D. Silica undersaturated primary magma generated at relatively high pressure and carbon dioxide concentration. So, the correct option is A. Carbonate sedimentary rock reacts with the silicate magma and produces calcium magnesium silicates. So, this is known as a desilication reaction. Next question. The magnesium number designated by M is particularly used as A. Olivine control line B. Evaluation of depleted or enriched mantle C. Partial melting or enriched event D. Differentiation index so the correct option is d differentiation index the differentiation index is the sum of the weight percentages of a normative quartz orthoclase albite nepheline leucite and calcite so for d differentiation index is the correct option next question nepheline magma crystallizes to form which one of the following suit of igneous rocks choices are a ogisite b isolite C. Limbergite and D. Mugiarite. The correct option is B. Isolite. Isolite is an intrusive igneous rock that is composed essentially of nepheline and an alkali pyroxene, usually agerine augite. It is the plutonic equivalent of volcanic nephilinites and typically the pyroxene is well crystallized and is surrounded by the nepheline. So, isolite is the correct option. Next question. Which one of the following correctly represents the composition of kimberlite? A. Nickel and calcium rich rock with garnet and uh, biotite phenocris. B. Volatile rich potassium uh, ultramafic rock composed of phenocris of olivine and uh, phlogopite. C. Sodium rich rock with high amount of biotite and hornblende. D. Dark colored iron and magnesium rich rock associated with mid oceanic ridges. So, the correct composition of the kimberlite is a volatile rich potassium ultramafic rock which is composed of uh, phenocris of uh, olivine and phlogopite. So, garnet, chloride, ilmenite, chromium diapside and olivine, they occur in the kimberlites in significantly higher quantities than diamonds. And as kimberlite uh, is an indicator of minerals, they are usually used for diamond prospecting as well as for the primary prospecting of uh, whether a target kimberlite is diamond bearing or not. Next question. D uh, during rapid quenching, when phenocryst is surrounded by glass, the texture is termed as... So, during rapid quenching, when phenocris is surrounded by a glass, the texture is termed as A. A phyric, B vitrophyric, C cumulophyric, D glomeroporphyritic. So, the correct option is vitrophyric. 
So vitrophyric texture is this is a variety of uh, inequigranular porphyritic texture in which larger crystals known as a phenocris are embedded in a glassy ground moss and the slate tends to break in the flat sheets. So vitrophyric texture is it is a variety of inequigranular porphyritic texture in which larger crystals these are known as a phenocris are embedded in a glassy ground moss. Next question. Which one of the following is similar to slate but has a silky sheen on the cleavage surface? Choices are A. Helicetide B. Phyllite C. Quartzite and D. Nice So the correct option is Phyllite so, phyllite is similar to the slate but has uh, typically uh, been heated to high temperature. The micas have grown larger and are visible as a sheen on the surface. Where uh, slate is a typically planar, phyllite can form in uh, wavy layers. So, phyllite is uh, a foliated metamorphic rock rich in um, tiny sheets of sericite mica and it is a durable and soft rock and it is used as a decorative aggregates, floor tiles and as an exterior building or facing stones. Next question. If the foliation is caused by parallel arrangement of medium to coarse grain phyllosilicate minerals, it is called A. Pycoloblastic, B. Lineation, C. Helicytic, D. Schistosity. So, the correct option is D. Schistosity. Schistosity uh, is nothing but the mode of foliation that occurs in certain metamorphic rocks as a consequence of the parallel alignment of platy and uh, lath shaped mineral constituents. It reflects a considerable intensity of the metamorphism uh, that includes the changes resulting from high temperatures, pressures and deformation. So, D. Schistosity is the correct option. Next question. With increasing metamorphic intensity, a granoplastic texture results in a. Increase in grain size, B. Decrease in grain size, C. No variation in grain size, D. Loss of fabric. With increase in the uh, metamorphic intensity, granoplastic texture results in increase in the grain size. Granoplastic texture is a typical texture formed in metamorphic rock when grains uh, mutually uh, they adjust their boundaries in the solid state in an attempt to achieve the textural equilibrium. Next question. Armored relics are, so what are armored relics? So choices are A, minerals as inclusion even though uh, they are no longer present in the rock matrix and B, high density of inclusion similar to the matrix mineral composition, C, porphyroblasts with no inclusions and D, replacement of pre-existing mineral grains by inclusion minerals. So armored relics uh, are, uh, these are the minerals as inclusion even though uh, they are no longer present in the rock matrix. So, A is the correct option. Next question. In a snowball crystal, if internal schistosity is undisturbed in the center of the porphyroblast but becomes increasingly tightly folded towards the margins during the formation of granulation cleavage and this feature represents A. Syntectonic growth pattern, B. Post-tectonic growth pattern, C. Pre-tectonic growth pattern and D. Increasing volume growth pattern. So, the correct option is A, syntectonic growth pattern. Syntectonic uh, porphyroblasts, they have grown during uh, a single phase of deformation and uh, these are the most frequently encountered type of uh, porphyroblasts in nature and inclusion patterns are generally, uh, they are uh, curved in syntectonic porphyroblasts and random or straight in uh, pre and uh, intertectonic porphyroblasts. A syntectonic growth pattern is the correct option. Next question. Sediments which contain grains of various sizes in nearly equal amount are said to be A well assorted, B unassorted, C positively skewed, D composite. So the correct option is B unassorted. Next question. In a metamorphic rocks, when all grains are of the same size and have planar boundaries which are intersecting at approximately 120 degrees, then the texture is known as A. Granoblastic polygonal texture, B. Dissuade texture, C. Andulose extension and D. Ribbon texture. So, the correct option is a granoblastic polygonal texture. A granoblastic uh, texture is an uh, equigranular texture in which uh, the crystals adopt a polygonal morphology with a grain uh, triple junctions of approximately 120 degrees. So, the formation of the granoblastic textures occurs to minimize uh, the combined surface energy of uh, phases within a rock. 
सो ये ग्रेनो प्लास्टिक पॉलीगोनल टेक्सचर इज द करेक्ट ऑप्शन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन जोन्ड ऑलिव इन क्रिस्टल आयरन टेंस टू डिफ्यूज अवे फ्रॉम द फाइलाइट रिच पोर्शन टूवर्ड्स द पार्ट ऑफ द एनरिच इन फोर्स राइट while magnesium will tend to diffuse in the opposite direction so this type of diffusion is known as a grain boundary diffusion b flux diffusion c self diffusion and d inter diffusion so the correct option is d inter diffusion most crystals have simple reverse joining patterns in olivine with a higher and variable forstrite at their rims so that is forstrite about 75 uh, to about uh, 82 than at the interiors so in a jol, uh, in jone uh, olivine crystal iron tends to diffuse away from the phyllite rich portions uh, which is towards the parts enriched in forstrite so while the magnesium will go towards uh, in opposite direction so this type of diffusion is known as inter diffusion next question which one of the following is defined as a line joining points where the rock have suffered metamorphism under similar pressure temperature conditions very simple question a isograd b grade c facies d jones isograd is nothing but a line joining the points where the rock have suffered equal or similar metamorphism under similar pressure temperature conditions next question an eclogite is so what is an eclogite eclogite is a choices are a a green colored rock dominated by pyroxene with plagioclase b a red and green dense rock dominated by garnet and omphacite pyroxene and lacking plagioclase c red and green dense rock dominated by plagioclase garnet and pyroxene d rock with garnet and pyroxene with abundant of mica so the correct option is so an eclogite is uh, nothing but it is a red and green dense rock dominated by garnet and omphacite pyroxene but with lacks plagioclase eclogite is a red green dense metamorphic rock containing granular minerals typically garnet and omphacite pyroxene rock and typically it lacks plagioclase next question the granulate facies rocks the at uh, high grades uh, they develop uh, felsic segregations due to partial melting are called a migmatites b paleozoan c anthracite d paragonite so the correct option is a migmatites so migmatite is a metamorphic rock which is formed by anatexis that is generally heterogeneous and uh, it preserves evidence of partial melting at the microscopic to macroscopic scale migmatites they represent the transition from metamorphic to igneous rocks in the rock cycle next question the characteristic of granulite facies is so what is the characteristic of granulite facies the choices are a formation of hydrous calcium aluminum silicate with zeolite prehnite and uh, pumpilite and b presence of mineral garnet with metabasites c extreme presence of glucophane without quartz and d development of both clinopyroxene and orthopyroxene so what is the characteristic of granulite facies so uh, here uh, the correct option is the granulate facies are typically characterized by granoblastic texture and a large amount of the quartz and feldspar or quartz and pyroxene with variable proportions of garnets so it occurs at very high pressures and high temperatures so the characteristic of granulate facies is the development of both clinopyroxene and orthopyroxene commonly with quartz and plagioclase d is the correct option next question which one of the following represents the location of metamorphic belts a along the divergent plates b subduction zone beneath island or continental margins c along transform plates d along the mobile belts so metamorphic belts are located along the subduction zone beneath the island docks and continental margins so b is the correct option hope you have learned some important points of, uh, uh, of this exam like uh, combined geoscientist exam and see you in the next video thank you for your time